induction machines, motor power flow diagram, and power law. So this is a quick six examples on induction machines for the power flow diagram and power loss. The problem states a three-phase induction motor that draws 105 kilowatts of power has the following properties. 1800 RPMs of synchronous speed, 1650 RPM actual rotor speed, 8 kW of total stator power losses, and 1 kilowatt of total shaft power losses. So the first example we're going to answer is calculate the total amount of power in kilowatts supplied to the rotor. The second example we're going to do is calculate the total amount of power loss in the motor due to the rotor copper losses. The third example we're going to do is determine the amount of power converted from electrical power to mechanical power in kilowatts. The fourth example we're going to do is determine the final amount of output power delivered by the motor in kilowatts. The fifth example is determine the percent efficiency of the motor. And the last and final example number six is approximate the horsepower rating of the motor. So let's get started. First things first, if we want to calculate the amount of power in kilowatts applied to the rotor, I'm going to draw a quick power flow diagram for an induction motor. Now this information is in the MCES reference handbook. The latest version at the time of this recording is version 1.1.2 and it's under section 4.2.5 titled three phase induction motor power flow on page 57. So we're just looking at the stator and the rotor here. The total amount of power drawn by the motor is drawn into the stator and this is known as your active input power. After that, we've got two types of losses in the stator. The first is the stator copper losses, or P for power, S for stator, C for copper, and L for losses. This is the losses due to the actual coils of the motor itself. The I squared are copper losses as they draw current and power is lost due to heat. Next, the second type of power losses in the stator is going to be the stator core losses. Again, P for power and core for the actual core, the iron core of that stator that those coils are wrapped around. Now, I'm just going to make these red to differentiate them from the power flowing from the stator to the rotor. All right, the amount of power that's left that gets transferred from the stator to the rotor is known as our air gap power, or it's also known as the rotor power. Same thing, just sometimes different variables or names are used for it. All right, so now that that's out of the way, how do we solve for the amount of power supplied to the rotor? Example number one is asking for the air gap power here, also known as the rotor power. So following this diagram from left to right, the stator draws in a total amount of 105 kilowatts of power. That's our input power right here. Next, the stator loses the copper losses and the core losses. Everything that's left over is what gets transferred to the rotor. So according to the problem, we've got eight kilowatts of total stator power losses. Essentially what they're telling us is the total amount of power lost in the stator or the sum of the stator copper losses and the stator core losses is going to be eight kilowatts. So if we set this equal to the air gap power or the rotor power, we've got our input power drawn by the motor minus the sum of the stator copper losses and stator core losses is going to give us our air gap power. All we're doing is subtracting the losses lost in the stator from the power drawn into the motor. Everything left over is what gets transferred from the input power to the rotor. All right, filling in the values from the problem, our input power drawn by the motor is 105 kilowatts, and the total amount of stator losses, or the sum of the stator copper losses with the stator core losses is eight kilowatts. Now we can probably do this in our head, but just to be sure, let's go ahead and pull up the calculator. So we've got 105 minus eight kilowatts, and that comes out to be 97 kilowatts of rotor power, also known as air gap power. 
And back to our power flow diagram over here on the left, here is our 97 kilowatts of power supplied to the rotor. That's the answer for example number one. Example number two now asks for the amount of power loss in the motor due to rotor copper losses. So again, let's look at the induction motor power flow diagram, this time really just looking at the rotor. Again, this is on page 57 of your version 1.12 reference handbook. So here's our rotor down here on the left. We know from solving example number one that the air gap power also known as the rotor power, was 97 kilowatts. All right, similar to the stator, the rotor also has power losses, except this time there's no core losses, it's only copper losses. So here, leaving the rotor is going to be our P for power, R for rotor, C for copper, and L for loss. This represents our rotor copper losses. Now, we can convert between our air gap power and our rotor copper losses using the slip of the motor. And this formula comes from page, also page 57 of your reference handbook, version 1.1.2, under 4.2.4, electrical machine theory. So the formula is the rotor copper losses are equal to S slip times the air gap power. So before we can convert from air gap power to rotor copper losses by multiplying by slip, we need to calculate slip. So calculating the slip of a motor is very easy. This comes from page 52 of your reference handbook under the section 4.2.1.3, percent slip in induction machines. And the formula is slip equals the difference between the synchronous speed of the motor and the actual rotor speed divided by the synchronous speed. Remember the synchronous speed, N sub S, that's how fast the rotating magnetic field is moving in the stator. We visually cannot see it, it's just a rotating magnetic field. Where N, the actual rotor speed, that's how fast the rotor of that motor is actually spinning. So directly from the problem, let's see, the synchronous speed is right up here, 1800 RPM. So 1800. RPM minus the actual rotor speed is right here, 1650 RPM. So 1650 RPM. And we're going to divide that by the same value of synchronous speed on top, which is 1800 RPM. All right, let's pull up our calculator and type this in. So I'm gonna hit the fraction key first, 1800 minus 1650, again divided by 1800. That's gonna give us a slip of one over 12, or if we convert from a fraction to a decimal, that gives us a slip of, we'll say about 0 0.083 in decimal form. Now we'll notice in the reference handbook, this formula, they also include times 100. And all that times 100 really does is it just helps us convert from a decimal to a percentage. So to convert from a decimal percentage, we multiply by 100. And in our calculator, that's going to be 8.3%. Alternatively, we can also just move the decimal over not once, but two places. All right, now that we know the slip of the motor, it's time to plug it in to our formula for our rotor copper losses multiply it by the air gap power in order to get the rotor copper losses. All right, so plugging back into that formula, we have a slip of 8.3% times the air gap power that we previously solved for of the rotor, 97 kilowatts. So back in our calculator, really quick, you gotta be careful when you're working with percentages in your calculator. I can use 8.3 here, but I need to multiply it by the percent sign, which is just second divide, before multiplying it by air gap power, or I can scroll up and use the decimal value. So the decimal value or the numerical value times the percent sign times, I'm gonna scroll up until we see our 97 kilowatts, 
of our rotor power. I'm going to press enter to bring that back down. Enter once more to get the answer on the calculator. And that comes out to 8.08 .08 kilowatts of our rotor copper losses. So we can visualize that value back here on our motor power flow diagram, just showing the rotor. Here is our 8.08 .08 kilowatts of power lost in the rotor due to the copper losses. And that's the final answer for example number two. So moving on to example number three. Example three asks, determine the amount of power converted from electrical power to mechanical power. So we've got our rotor air gap power, we've got our rotor copper losses. The amount of power that leaves the rotor is known as P converted CONV or PM for mechanical. This is the amount of power that's converted from electrical power to our actual mechanical power that's going to feed the shaft. All right, looking at the power flow diagram over here on the left, we can see that our converted power, also known as our mechanical power, leaving that rotor is going to be equal to the amount of power going into the rotor, which is our air gap power, minus any of our power losses, which in this case is just going to be our rotor copper losses. So plugging these values, we've got 97 kilowatts of active power or rotor power going into the rotor. We lose 8.08 .08 kilowatts of power in the rotor due to the rotor copper losses. That was the answer for example number two. So pulling up our calculator, we have 97 kilowatts. I'm going to do minus second answer for minus 8.08 .08 kilowatts of rotor copper losses. That gives us a converted or mechanical power of, I'm going to say 88.9 kilowatts. And we can visualize this value right here on the power flow diagram. This is the amount of power that's leaving the rotor and that's going to be entering the shaft itself. Again, P converted or PM for P mechanical, same quantity, just a different name. All right, that's it for example number three. Let's look at example number four. Example number four says, determine the final amount of output power delivered by the motor in kilowatts. All right, we're gonna pull up our power flow diagram again, this time only looking at the shaft, which is gonna to be to the right of the rotor. So the amount of power leaving the rotor that's the amount of power that enters the shaft. Again, this is, we can call it P converted or P mechanical. And we discovered that was 88.9 kilowatts of power from the answer to example number three. Now, let's talk about these shaft losses. We've got two different types of shaft losses. The first type of shaft losses is the friction and windage losses. The second type of shaft losses is any additional losses that we need to account for in the shaft, and they're just known as either stray losses or the miscellaneous losses, or PMISC for short. All the remaining power that makes it through the shaft, when we subtract our shaft losses, is going to be our P out or our output power. This is the power that finally gets transferred to whatever mechanical, typically rotational load is connected to the motor, whether it's a fan or a pump or an agitator, anything like that. So again, looking at our power flow diagram, to solve for P out over here on the right, we're gonna look at our converted power feeding into the shaft. We're gonna subtract the sum of our shaft losses, which is the friction and windage losses and the miscellaneous stray losses everything else makes its way from the shaft to the mechanical load. So our output power, we've got P converted was 88.9 kilowatts. Again, that was the answer to example number three. Now we've got to subtract the total shaft losses. So let's see, look at the problem. The problem doesn't tell us our friction and windage losses. It doesn't tell us our miscellaneous stray losses. But what the problem does tell us is this motor has one kilowatts of total total shaft power losses. Total meaning the sum 
of our friction and windage and our miscellaneous stray losses. So directly from the problem, we're going to subtract 1 kilowatts from our converted power to get our output power. So back in the calculator, since our converted power is the last answer we solved for, I'm just going to tell the calculator to subtract 1 kilowatt from it. And of course, it's pretty simple. We could have also just done that in our head, subtracting 1 from this 8 here. We get, of course, 87.9 kilowatts of output power. Let's go ahead and visualize that on the power flow diagram. I'm going to copy this number and paste it right underneath here, underneath T out. Now, a really important note to make, especially when you're solving problems on the PE exam, 99.9% .9 of induction motor problems you're going to get. You're going to ignore the friction, windage, and miscellaneous losses. In other words, you're essentially going to assume that your shaft losses are negligible. It's a really important concept we explore more in live class. And unless the problem either directly tells you what the shaft losses are or it's asking you to solve for the shaft losses, it's safe to assume that's equal to zero. It's safe to assume it's negligible. And the special condition that arises in that case is that your converted power or your mechanical power over here on the left entering the shaft ends up equaling your output power. Now, why is that not the case in this problem? Well, in this problem, they told us directly the total shaft losses. So we cannot assume they're equal to zero. Just a small note. Again, 99.9% .9 of the PE problems you're going to see on induction motors, you're going to assume your shaft losses are approximately zero or negligible. All right, that's it for example number four. Let's take a look at example number five. Example number five says determine the percent efficiency of the motor. Anytime we're dealing with efficiency, I like to draw a simple single line diagram so we can help understand where this relationship and formula comes from. And that's going to look something like this. So again, here's our single line diagram of our motor. Here's our voltage bus on the top feeding our motor. Any amount of power drawn by the motor from the bus, that's going to be your input power. On the power flow diagram, that's the quantity at the very far left entering the stator. Next, the final amount of power leaving the motor, that's the output power. That's the quantity we just solved for. That's the power that makes it on the far right of the power flow diagram of the motor entering the mechanical load. And then leaving the motor, we can call this P loss, which for this simple single line diagram, it's the sum of all your losses, your stator losses, your rotor losses, and your shaft losses, if any. So your percent efficiency formula is located on page 27 of your reference handbook under the section 2.2.5 energy management. You can use the same efficiency formula for transformers as well. This formula is simply your output power divided by your input power or the ratio of the amount of power that makes it to your mechanical load to the amount of power drawn by your motor from the bus that's powering it. And of course, this ratio, your input power is bigger than your output power, so that's going to give you a decimal less than one. And you'll net, again, you'll notice in the formula, you multiply by 100 to convert from a decimal to a percentage. We typically represent efficiency with the Greek variable Eta. So let's see, our output power from the previous example was 87.9 kilowatts. Again, we know the input power directly from the problem is right here. 105 kW of power that's drawn by the motor from the bus. So P in is 105 kilowatts. That gives us a ratio of 87.9 kilowatts of output power to 105 kilowatts of input power. Back at our calculator, our output power, that was the last value we solved for, so I'm just going to divide by the input power of 105 kilowatts. In decimal form, our efficiency is 0 0.837. And of course, to convert from a decimal to a percentage, we just multiply by 100 or move the decimal over by two places. It's the same 
So we get a percent efficiency of 83.7%. And that is the final answer for example number five. All right, last example problem for this video is example number six. Example number six says approximate the horsepower rating of the motor. Now it's really helpful to note that your output power, P out, this is essentially your horsepower rating in electrical units of watts. So we can convert between electrical unit of watts and mechanical units of horsepower using the following conversions available in the reference handbook. On page two of your reference handbook under the section 1.2 conversion factors, our first conversion factor is multiply kilowatts by 1.341 to get horsepower. Again, be careful here. We're not multiplying our input power or any of our power losses to get our horsepower rating of the motor. We have to multiply the output power. So rearranging this to have horsepower on the left side of the equal sign, we've got the horsepower rating of the motor is gonna be our output power and units of kilowatt times our conversion factor of 1.341 from page two of our reference handbook. And this is really in the unit of horsepower per kilowatts. All right, let's fill in the values. The output power of this motor that we solved for earlier, and we're gonna multiply it by our conversion factor of 1.341. Let's check our units. We've got kilowatts on top, cancel with kilowatts on bottom of this conversion factor, and that's gonna leave us in the units that we're looking for of horsepower. All right, let's pull up our calculator. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll up and find the 87.9 kilowatts of output power. Here it is. And I'm just gonna multiply by 1.341. All right, that gives us a horsepower rating of approximately 117 point, I'm gonna say nine horsepower. Now, if you work with motors a lot, you'll notice this is a non-standard size for a horsepower rating. So this is just the number we got to using the power information given in the problem. Typically, standard horsepower sizes, you're looking at seeing about 100 or 125 horsepower for something of this size. So a little bit of a non-standard horsepower rating. Just wanna point that out in case it confuses anybody. All right, there's one more way we could solve example number six. We have a second conversion factor in the reference handbook. Uh, it's likely one you're more familiar with, and that's gonna be on the same page two of your reference handbook for 1.2 conversion factors is horsepower times 745.7 to get the unit of watts. So to set this equal to horsepower, which is what we are solving for, we need to divide watts by 745.7. So again, be careful. We have a lot of different power quantity and the unit of watts that we've worked with in this problem. Again, horsepower is the mechanical unit of your electrical output power. So I've got P out on top in the unit of watts, that's this quantity right here, divided by 745.7 watts per horsepower. All right, let's plug in some values. The electrical output power of this motor that we already solved for, that was 87.9 kilowatts. We're dividing it by the conversion factor of 745.7 watts per horsepower. Let's check our units before we plug these numbers in our calculator. All right, I've got watts on bottom and I've got kilowatts on top. That means only the watts cancel. In other words, I gotta be sure to include 1,000 times this 87.9 to actually get the watts. If I've got a fraction underneath a fraction, this per horsepower in the denominator means that this unit is gonna go to the top and put us in the unit of horsepower that we're looking for. Okay, back on our calculator, I'm scrolling up to find my 87.9 kilowatts of output power, here it is. Maybe put it on top of a fraction, and here's where we gotta be careful. We have to use either e to the three for kilowatts or times 10 to the three for kilowatts or times a thousand. Since we don't have kilowatts on the bottom of this fraction, we only have watts. All right, now we're gonna divide by 
our conversion factor 745.7 watts per horsepower. And that's going to give us the same 117.9 horsepower. Now you'll notice if we compare the answer up here in our calculator from the previous example to this one, they're extremely similar, but they're a little bit different, right? We've got 117.896 from the previous conversion factor. We've got 117.898 from this conversion factor. All that is, it's just the difference in accuracy for the two conversion factors. Those decimals, for example, 745.7. In real life, there's much more decimals here, but you typically round it to just 0.7 for accuracy purposes. So that's why they're off by, what is that, about a thousandth? A couple of thousandths, but approximately the same value. All right, that's it for this video, looking at induction machines, motor power flow diagrams, and power loss. Hope it helped, and we'll see you on the next one.